Okay, uh, the War George Washington uh, Masonic National Memorial, and we're going to analyze this building and what's in it. Here's um, George Washington and that pillar and uh, all of these uh, dignitaries now gathered there. Uh, this is, uh, I believe, that statue. Um, not sure if they moved this or not, or it's the same one, but anyway, you can see the Masonic checkerboard. And here's that single pillar, Masonic. Oh, he's um, uh, got, he's uh, immortalized in this. Within that building is Benjamin Franklin, a Freemason. You can see here he does the Pledge of Allegiance, hand to heart or chest, and he holds the key. And so this is all Freemasonry, the key again to the mysteries, uh, the mystery religions. Uh, uh, and that ceremony, the key of the city, uh, I think that's exoteric meaning, but in this case, we can understand through the writings that it is the key to the mystery religions. And George, uh, I'm sorry, Benjamin Franklin again, and Masonic regalia. Uh, you can see that hand to the chest. Uh, I believe this is a different depiction. Uh, I think that's Woodrow, Woodrow Wilson. I'm not sure why I put that there, but I do have uh, Richard. Uh, I'm not Richard, but uh, oh gosh, I forget this actor's name. But anyway, um, oh, it's skipping my mind. But anyway, we'll look at the down facing pentagram, the Maltese cross. And, of course, the elements of the Jewish um, temple, and that is the uh, Ark of the Covenant. And so you have this depiction that looks and feels and, and smells like the, uh, uh, the real thing, but it's not. Knights Templar uh, statue or uh, in the Masonic Memorial. This is key now, this room. It's the Knights Templar room. And you see the cross and crown of Knights Templar. This is York Rite uh, Freemasonry. And within that your uh, 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 room, you can see this cross. It actually has the IHS. And so now a connection to Freemasonry and the Jesuits, the IHS in the cross and the cross and crown. Uh, there is the uh, stained glass window. This man is pointing as above, so below, and that below is toward the skull uh, and the ground so you have all of this symbology Christ with this Sun and moon and uh, all of this now you see that dove it's the same one that Alistair Crowley has in his uh, Ordo Templi Orientis you all see that Ordo Templi Orientis have this vesica uh, uh, Pisces some type of a uh, yoni sign it actually is the female part sign and you see that in iconography and also in the Ordo Templi Orientis uh, Alistair Crowley's uh, um, uh, logo for his uh, secret society. Knights Templar again cross and crown. You have the Masonic aprons in the National Memorial and the Skull and Bones and Skull and Bones again and now looking at the architecture and I'll uh, show you. This is very um, peculiar, and under you have to understand anatomy this way. As well. okay, so here's the um, uh, foundation stone with the square and compass, 1925, I believe. And now you have here the square and compass on the grounds. When you look at that square and compass on the grounds itself, the square or the compass is the male aspect. So the compass is toward the heaven, and therefore you have the building, which is the phallic symbol. Uh, going skyward toward heaven. You have the square itself, and the square is earth and female. And so this square, you can see if you understand anatomy, uh, this grounds design is the female part and the canal uh, and that female part. So you can understand this union between sexes, and in this case you can see the anatomy and the architecture of the skyward uh, male part and the earth word female part. Interesting how they do this. Uh, now let's look at an interesting thing here. This is the tomb of George Washington and the the uh, you've seen this before on Masonic diplomas and the use of two pillars uh, or the two obelisks in this case and you saw that uh, in Aleister Crowley's uh, tribute uh, to obelisks so this is Washington's tomb if he's Christian why is he using this um, and why is he using the symbology of Egypt uh, if you think it's Egyptian revival 
Um, that is their definition of this uh, whole thing, and you can try and finagle the history yourself and say that this was Neo-Egyptian architecture at that time, and therefore they adorned the tomb this way. I'm sorry. Look at it for what it is, and look at the rest of what Freemasonry is. This is Jefferson's tomb, uh, or, or uh, tombstone. Franklin, his parents have the obelisk, and he actually has the plate. Uh, so he didn't get the obelisk. Uh, for Rockefeller and the obelisk. Now the most famous obelisk in the world, the Washington Memorial. And you can see that and why. Now you see the understanding of this as above, so below the use of the reflecting pool uh, to signify that. The obelisk is an Egyptian sun symbol. It is a phallic it is phallic in nature, representing the male penis, a symbol of generation or G. So you got uh, the two symbols of generation, the male part and the female part, and you can see Washington and the mall as uh, representing this phallic symbol and showing that. I believe presidents now face this uh, when giving their inauguration uh, and getting inaugurated into office. This is the new layout, and the new layout has this shape, the Vesica Pisces uh, shape. Uh, that's the conjunction of two circles. That is the female part, and you can see the female part here in conjunction with the male part, appropriate architecture and layout of landscaping. And so the another obelisk uh, in the world is at Vatican, at the Vatican, St. Peter's uh, Basilica. And you can see that that is being used as a sundial, and of course the cardinal points uh, east and west uh, being used that way. Uh, the facing, uh, I believe this face is toward the sun, and so uh, you have the obelisk. This actually, this grounds itself of the Vatican uh, are, is in the shape of a key and a keyhole. And so if you look that uh, on your Google Maps, you can see that that is a key all the way going down with a key end uh, in this portion over here. But that is the key arm or the trunk of that key. The obelisks around the world, and I'll go through this. Again, Freemasonry is global. This religion is global. And is the religion of the elites. Singapore, Chinese uh, obelisk in uh, Panama Canal, and you can understand why that is. They cooperate with regard to trade. These are secret societies that uh, do things in secret, and they organize themselves, and they are uh, in control of the world. The United States. Brasilia, Brazil, and even North Korea. And so I believe that, yes, we might think that North Korea is isolated, but I believe that these leaders are left into position, and these are social experiments. And this particular experiment is a poverty-stricken, uh, extreme socialist communist state. Uh, and that is an experiment on the people, and you can see what they do uh, in this environment. They literally um, cry uh, at the death of Kim Jong-il uh, and they pant and wane. It's almost like a competitive thing if you've seen uh, depictions of these people crying within this communist state, uh, how psychologically they control people that way. And it's a desperate uh, situation as well. This is a Buddhist obelisk uh, in my hometown. Uh, I can't understand why they're using the obelisk, but you'll see later uh, of that connection of Buddhism and Hinduism and uh, the other world religions.